subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back, ninjas from around the world. Hope that you're doing great today. Matt, that's me. Garrett, that's him. You can't see him, but you'll be able to hear him in a second. (laughs) We're back and we're going to be talking about networking today, which is a great topic. We're pulling topics out of our Facebook community today. And so if you're not in our Facebook community, and there's already great answers on a lot of these things, but head over to facebook.com slash groups slash The Ninja Selling Podcast and join over 8,000 of your peers who all love Ninja and all things Ninja. It's a great place to just get to know people, ask questions, get a variety of answers, all which are wonderful. And that's kind of where our topic comes from today, Garrett. This was your idea to start going in there and pulling these things, which I think is fantastic. And so we're going to talk about the topic of members-only fee-based exclusive one-seat per profession business referral clubs, as it was put. Yes. Well, good morning, Matt. Good morning. You scared me when you launched in. I said, hey, okay, I think you should lead into this one. And you like blasted into it. And I was looking at something else. I was like, oh, we're going. Here we go. (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) Welcome, everybody, today. I'm so happy that everybody's joining us. We're kicking around topics for today, and I started to look back into our feed on Facebook and the Facebook community there, and this one jumped out to both Matt and I as we were kind of reading through the different comments, posts, questions, feedback from people. These groups, these fee-based group, membership groups, it's interesting, Matt, over my, my time of working with different real estate agents that are involved or different business owners that are involved in these different types of groups or clubs, it could be really hit or miss. I know some people that will walk away going, it was one of the best things I ever did for my career was being involved in one of those groups. And I know some that are like, it is the absolute biggest waste of time that I have in my week is going and be involved with this. But I feel like I should be involved with it because I have my seat in there. And if I give it up, I lose my seat. And I just don't want to give it up. But it's a waste of my time. And I'm like, let's talk about what you just said. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. That's a whole hot mess of just what you said. There's confusion written all over that. So uh, this post came from Anna Weller Beagleman or Beigleman. Maybe one of those pronunciations. And I apologize if I'm messing it up. Matt and I practice. We practice both of these names over and over and over again before we decide to hit record because these are two names that we can easily butcher very well. So we apologize if we are butchering your name. They could go so many different ways. And so I apologize. And I don't think we ever settled on what it actually is, but hopefully that works. But she asked, you know, about these uh, member only fee based exclusive one seat per profession business referral clubs. What are some of the ways to use a ninja philosophy within here? And it is a great question because, as you said, Garrett, a lot's going to depend on the quality of the group. And I always start with people's like, well, if you're joining that group, are the people in there people that you would be proud to refer your people to? Because that's where it starts. If you're not excited about referring people to those other professions that are in there, then it's going to be really hard for you to get excited about attending and attracting referrals out of them. And the whole thing is, how does this work with Ninja? And it works beautifully with Ninja. Like These types of groups are really an awesome platform to take everything that we have in Ninja and apply it into this group. The worst thing you can do with a group like this is just go like, oh, yay, I'm part of a group. Then you show up and you sit down and you really don't talk to anybody. You kind of wait for the event to kind of start and people get up and speak. And then usually there's one or two people that get to get up and pitch your business or their business. And then hopefully sometime during the you know year, you get to stand up and pitch your business. And hopefully everybody like loves your pitch. And then you're like, okay, great. I did my pitch. Like, this is great. I'm part of this networking group and you're done. If you handle it that way, don't be involved with the group. You're not waiting for your moment of glory to get up on stage and say, look, let me tell you all about me. What you are doing though, and like the gentleman, or I think uh, is Michael Rosenblum. Yes, that was, I think we decided that was the pronunciation. It could be Blum, but (laughs) we're doing our best, everybody. Just roll with us. I'm sorry, Michael. We appreciate you guys so much. We really do appreciate you guys. So the interesting thing is, is that like the way he described about approaching that room and it's an opportunity to one, educate people on 
how to refer and how to look for business and how that happens out there. Like how people buy and sell real estate was a great thing that he shared. In the interim though, you need to be social inside this group. You got a great number of tools, part of your Ninja 9. You can take people from this group and go have a lunch separately to get to know more about their business. Not here. Go do some one-on-one stuff with them. You've got handwritten notes you can write. You've got a whole database of people that you have now can cultivate and check in with them and their businesses and see how they're doing. And how is inflation affecting your business? You don't have to have that meeting at the actual networking event. You can have that as a separate conversation saying, hey, we know each other through this. And this is kind of like how it's affecting my world, how it's affecting yours. You're a networking group. You're there to build and grow relationships. Like, I love these groups. I absolutely love them if done correctly. Yeah. And I've gone back and forth on these over the years. I've never formally been a part of one, been invited to some many, many times and sat in on them and listened to what's going on. And I think it depends on the energy of the group because they do track referrals, which I think is a good thing. They want to make sure, hey, are people actually referring business to each other? But if everybody's there just to collect referrals, we got a problem up front. But if everybody's there to add value to each other, which I do find most of them are, most of them are filled. I mean, these aren't inexpensive groups either. Like you have to really think about, hey, do I want to commit the finances and the time? Because this is typically in every single week, early morning, I got to be there ready to go and be with my people. So you're going to have people that are, you know, they're excited about growth. And typically those people are value add type of people. That doesn't mean all are. So I think if you're there to add value, then you want to understand what other people's businesses are. They want to understand your business. And you want to learn from each other of like, how can I best help you? Who's your ideal client? I remember somebody had asked me that when I attended one of these once said, what's the best way for me to help you find new clients? I was like, that's such an amazing question. For someone who is a stereo consultant, you know, professional audio to ask, that's great. That script, that little question of like, In your industry, how can I find somebody that best needs your services? That's how I would say it. And that's actually what Michael had commented on here. He said, part of his process here is like, everybody there is there to learn. They know we're there for business. And he said his last presentation, he took it right out of the installation manual and said, these people probably want to buy or sell this year. And he started training on them on finding pain or pleasure, which is so cool. And I'm sure everybody in the audience is like, that's great. Now I know how I can add value to you. And then when you're sitting there, listen to from other people of how can you add value to them? That's going to be the best use of the group is all about the value, right? Where these groups can get a little strange sometimes is you'll have a group that says, okay, you're welcome to be a part of the group, but you have to bring a referral every single time you attend the event. Usually what I find with that is that at the end of the day, they can say, oh, we had X amount of referrals past this last year. But then when it's a forced referral like that, you have to bring one. They're just throwing names. Oh, man. It's like, here, yeah, here's a referral. This person probably needs a new uh, HVAC system. Give them a call. That's not really a great lead. But what happens is it starts to deteriorate the value of that group. Like that stuff can start to break down. Where if you really have a good group of people that approach it of like, how can I help your business? Who's the right person I need to be finding that would actually be needing your services? That's a different mentality built inside the group. And I will tell you, Matt, it usually comes from the top down. If you really want to get a good sense of what a group like this is going to be, have a very good one-on-one meeting with the organizer of the group. Don't just be kind of like invited in through other peers and be a part of it. You need to talk with the head honcho of that group running and overseeing everything. And you'll pretty much get to know everything you need to know from that person because that mentality of who set it up trickles down to everything that's happening inside that group. When you mentioned taking advantage of the opportunity to have one-on-ones and handwritten notes, this is the other beauty about a group like this too. Since everybody is there to connect, they know they're there to network. And some of these groups have, you should be doing these one-on-ones. That's part of being a part of the group. What a great opportunity to practice those skills. There's no wrong answers in writing notes having lunches, inviting people out because you're most likely going to get clear and honest feedback from the group as well. Because if one person isn't pulling their weight in the group or they're not really excited, other people are going to talk about it and come together and say, hey, Matt, you know, 
it doesn't seem like you're super energetic about this. How can we help you? Right. And it's like, great. Awesome. You're going to learn a lot. There is one guy, mortgage officer, Marquis, he's up in New Jersey, SunQuest Funding. A little shout out for him. He's a master networker. And he was in one of these groups. And this was a group that I attended every now and then. And he was amazing. All he did was call people up and talk to them about them, invite them to lunch, learn about them. Never once did he ever pitch me a product, ever. I refer him all the time because he just wanted to learn about other people. That's the beauty of the opportunity of a group like this. As you start to get to know all these people, they all want to better their business. They all want to grow. You're all there with a common interest. It helps the community be stronger. Like There's so much value in these groups. On the interesting side, too, is, is that where you have to be careful is that they can turn into a complaint session, too. Again, if you have a person that is not a strong leader, they all of a sudden, as a group, can start to complain about the community and taxes that we're up against as business owners and yada, yada, yada. And what are they doing to take you know, support the crime downtown? And there's all kinds of things that it can get out of control with. And this goes back to you've got a really good leader, they've set the stage, the rules have been put in place, they can be brilliant. And Michael's a prime example of what he shared there is like, one is, is that the group is going to be what you make of it. And for him, he was talking about that time when you'd be able to get up on stage and to do your speech and to basically say, here, I'm going to share something with all of you. Getting up there and talking about how referrals work and why people do real estate and what causes them to be a buyer or seller and things that you can see before it actually happens. It's a really great topic to get up there and talk about in front of the room. And if that's your speech once a year, it's a really great touch for everybody in that space. Yeah. And I'll say there's two things that I want to mention about these groups. One, make sure you're set up with your sphere and the things that you're doing within the Ninja Nine first going into this, because this is going to be a great addition on top of that in terms of adding people to your database and accomplishing Ninja 9 activities, but you got to have that stuff in place first. The second is, as a realtor, Garrett, we're salespeople. We're networkers. We know how referrals work because that is the Ninja way. Now, this is a referral group. Use that to your advantage and seek out a leadership position in these groups and help train people so that they can be better in their own businesses. If you rise up to be president of one of these groups or offer to take on that role, you're going to have more opportunities for trainings and things inside that you can say, hey, you know, John, with your professional audio company here, hey, here's how we've seen referrals work. It has nothing to do with real estate. It's just all about business to business connections, business to consumer connections. You can use your knowledge as a realtor and how you operate to your advantage to lead one of these groups, which is also going to come back and serve you well too. So I think those are, you know, two things to keep in mind. Well, and to go down exactly what you're talking about, you know, in Ninja, we talk about like, well, one, we don't ask for referrals. We don't bring up business unless they bring it up first. The cool thing is when you're in a referral networking community, it's like a wide open door. It's like everybody knows. It's like if you walked in there and said like, these are the best ways to refer and this is where you can find these people that need help. Like you can't walk into a party and be like, Hey, everybody come around the fireplace over here for a second. I'm going to, I'm going to give a little like rundown here of how you properly refer to a real estate agent or what you should be looking for. You can't do it there, but the gate is open to have that conversation to put it out there. And everybody's going to go, Oh, that totally makes sense. It might even be fun to learn about other people's businesses on those lines and say, look, as a, I keep going to HVAC because my HVAC system went out my house. Not good in Northern California in the summer. Oh, we were triple digits the other day with no AC. Okay, I can handle it. My 18-year-olds cannot. They are so mad and so grumpy. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, guys. There is a solution on the way. But they have specific things also. Like there are things and trends. If you get somebody who's running one of those businesses and they understand the patterns of their business, what you understand for yours you can share that and say, well, what are your patterns that you guys look for that cause people to need your services that we can all be paying attention to? Like you can open up a much bigger conversation. I'm going to say on a, not an elementary level, on a college level, a college level education of like, how are we looking at truly what causes your business to run and what should we all be looking for? Nobody, even realtors don't understand when we share with them the life changes that cause real estate to happen. And they're like, 
Oh, that makes total sense. I guarantee you anybody outside of real estate hasn't even thought about it at all. Well, so I, I think these are great. I'm really happy that this topic came up in our group. It didn't get a ton of comments, but Michael certainly hit the nail on the head. I think this was great. So let's pull more of these questions, Garrett. There's two things that got our attention with this. One, Anna, thank you so much for the post in the community, because I do think that there are a lot of people that wonder about this and they, they get offered these things every once in a while. They wonder if it's a good idea or they're in one and they're not sure if it's really what it's supposed to be, or they may have had a really bad experience and they're like, yeah, that's a bunch of crap. I'll never do one of those ever again. And they get burnt on it. It's good to look at it from a handful of different angles. Second piece, and again, didn't get a whole lot of comments on it, but usually when there's somebody who comes in and summarizes the whole thing in one answer, everybody else is like, yeah, that's good. Looks like that one was answered. Michael, thank you very much for your detailed response on this because it really summed up everything that anybody needed to add into that post of your experience and how that's worked for you. And it's, you're not just sitting back and waiting for things to happen. You are being proactive with it. And that's why we decided we wanted to comment on this and do a podcast. So thanks to both of you. We're going to do more of this. Thank you guys. Yeah. So there we go, Garrett. Moving on. So with that being said, everybody, thank you so much for attending today. I know this was a little bit of a shorter episode, but uh, we figured it's hot out, summertime, give everybody just a little shot in the arm, a little thing to think about. If you do want to know more about Ninja Selling and upcoming installations and coaching and mastery groups and everything that we have to offer inside of Ninja Selling, go to ninjaselling.com. All your answers will be there. If you want to learn more about our community, which I highly suggest you come and join because questions like what we talked about today and posts like we talked about today is what you will find in the community. We highly suggest you go check that out. And that's the Ninja Selling Podcast community in Facebook. You can search for it in Facebook. It'll pop up. And then I will happily allow you into that group. Just answer the membership questions. Please answer the questions. We have over 700, I think actually almost over 800 people right now that have asked to be part of the group, but have not answered any questions. That's a lot of people. <laughs> so if you're one of those people saying, hey, I asked to be a part of that group and I was never submitted in, it's because you didn't answer any questions. We're not sure if you're real or not. There's a lot of robots out there. So um, appreciate it. if you want to do that, answer those questions. We'll get you into it. We'd love to have you be part of the group. Until then... Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. See you in the next one. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.